Warning, this is not financial advice. How do companies that lose money survive? Uber, Twitter, Airbnb, all these companies still don't turn a profit, yet are worth billions of dollars. Profits remain elusive. In this video about unprofitable companies, we explore how this is even possible, the secrets of these companies' success, how you and I might be getting ripped off, and why losing money is actually sometimes a good thing. If you just pay attention, you might just learn something here. First, let's distinguish between revenue and profit. Revenue is any money that comes into the business from selling a product or providing a service. If you subtract your expenses, such as advertising or paying employees, what you're left with is profit. Some companies like Airbnb make billions in revenue per year, but not only do they not make profit, they actually lose money. They do this by using money provided through venture capital. Okay, what's our backstory? We're brothers from New Hampshire, we're venture capitalists. I'm sick of that. Let's be from Vermont, and let's have an emerging maple syrup conglomerate. Running an unprofitable business, relying on venture capital, is kind of like a kid opening a lemonade stand. The ingredients are all funded by the parents, and the kids sell the lemonade at a rate where it's fun and easy to get customers, but never profitable. At first, your parents are fine with losing a little money to get the lemonade stand running and aren't really expecting you to make a return on investment. Imagine if your parents let you run the lemonade stand instead of just one day, but for a full year. Then your parents might say, well, the ingredients are expensive, you should charge more. But when you try, you find nobody wants to pay for an expensive cup of lemonade. Are you kidding me? Oh my God, this is awful. I'm not even joking. Who made that? Us. Us? It's beautiful. You made it? Give me my money back. No, no. you can't. You I want my dollar back. If your parents become unwilling to continue funding your lemonade stand, you go ask your rich uncle to buy out your parents and give you money to run for another year. The goal is to eventually figure out a way to make the lemonade stand profitable, but that's a problem for the future. So why are these big companies worth so much if they don't make any money? Your company cannot be worth that much. Our company is worth nothing. It's all about how much someone else is willing to pay for ownership of the company. Let's use Uber as an example. Private investors, known as venture capitalists, took on a big risk on Uber succeeding by providing the first rounds of funding in 2011. They raised $11 million, valuing Uber's total worth as $47 million. Eight years later, in 2019, the company IPO'd, meaning anyone can now buy ownership in Uber. It began trading at $45 a share. Care to guess what that company is worth now? Uh, millions. Billions, with a B. Or more accurately, $75 billion. At this time, many of the venture capitalists sold their positions to you and I for billions of dollars in investment profit. Investors that bought shares of Uber at the IPO are now clinging onto the hopes that they can find someone else willing to buy their shares for more. There's only two reasons someone would buy those shares off of them. The buyer thinks that they can find another person who will buy them for more, or that Uber will figure out a way to become profitable. Unfortunately, since the IPO, the stock has been trading at a lower value. Either way, regardless if the stock eventually trades higher, the venture capitalists and Uber executives already got their money, and now it's someone else's problem. For that, I give you 100 and you're lucky to get that. I need that money. I missed the part where that's my problem. The acceptance of unprofitable companies at astronomical valuations first became mainstream in the dot-com era of the early 2000s. Investors saw the potential of the internet and were willing to pay a premium for companies with the assumption that they would eventually become a success. Sure, some investors were either lucky or more strategic buying shares of companies like Amazon and eBay, but the majority of these companies' path to profitability was based on an assumption that the internet would evolve enough for their business to make money. Some of these companies like Pets.com had business plans that with today's e-commerce economy works really well, proven now successful by companies such as Chewy. So why did Pets.com, a company once valued at $300 million, fail to survive? Time, 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 time. Most fail to survive due to a lack of time. While many of these dot-com companies had correctly assumed that the internet would connect the entire world and be a major component of the economy, thus making their business model work, 
most failed to correctly assume how long the time would take to get there. These companies relied on their investors to survive. Once the dot-com boom crashed in 2000, investors couldn't find someone else to buy their shares off of them, causing their valuations to plummet, leaving the companies with little investor money to continue operating. I'm all out of money! With tech giants such as Uber, these lessons aren't learned. While the dot-com era all focused on mainly a single catalyst to profitability, the internet, these new tech companies all have grand assumptions of how one day they'll be profitable. Despite Uber doing 6.3 billion trips in 2021, they lose money every year. Usually the first excuse of a company losing money is that they're in the growth phase and need to run at a loss to capture market share. Once they have, they will raise their prices and promise investors to bring in hefty profits. Well, they've captured that market share and raised costs, but they're still not profitable. They've concluded that under their current business model, they might never be profitable. So what's their solution? They assume in the future, driverless cars will be the norm and Uber won't have to employ any drivers, thus reducing their costs significantly. That very well might happen, but their assumption of when that will could destroy them. Many of these new business models only work at scale once they've hit a critical mass of users. They run at a loss to gain customers, and once they hit their target amount of users, they can jack up the prices to become profitable. On paper, it makes a lot of sense, but in practice, it's turned out to be a lot harder than it looks. In the short term, consumers do benefit from cheaper prices, but long term, they could lose, as once these competing companies fail to price match and eventually close their doors, we are left with a monopoly free to choose their own prices. Monopoly. Amazon has one of the most evil examples of how running at a loss can catapult your growth to the extreme. By undercutting market prices for all items, customers would go to Amazon instead of regular stores to get the cheapest price. Famously, they destroyed diapers.com by selling diapers so cheap that no one else online could compete, forcing online stores to close shop. Once they did, they can raise the prices to whatever they want, now that they have no competition. Thanks, Bezos. Besides evil intentions of reverse price gouging, there are other legitimate reasons to intentionally not go after profits especially when trying to expand a company as it often reduces growth. In fact, some companies such as Facebook in their early days even avoided making revenue in fear that it would make their website less cool. Settle an argument for us. I say it's time to start making money from the Facebook, but Mark doesn't want to advertise you. Who's right? Well, neither of you yet. The Facebook is cool, that's what it's got going for. Yeah. You don't want to ruin it with ads because ads aren't cool. Exactly. It's like you're throwing the greatest party on campus and someone saying it's got to be over by 11. And while ads certainly are not cool, in the new wave of Silicon Valley startups, some also avoid revenue so when they pitch their company to potential investors, they can let their imagination run free to how much the company might be worth. Once you start making profit, if you want to switch back to a growth phase and be unprofitable, that's a really tough sell for investors. Why would you go after revenue? Because to make money? No. If you show revenue, people will ask how much and it will never be enough. The company that was the 100x or the 1000xer becomes the 2x dog. But if you have no revenue, you can say you're pre-revenue. You're a potential pure play. It's not about how much you earn. It's about what you're worth. And who's worth the most? Companies that lose money. These big companies don't play fair. If it was you or me losing money every year, we'd be out on the street begging for money. When these companies do it, their begging is called capital raising. And as long as they can find investors willing to believe in them, they can run forever. Maybe it's time to start fighting back by helping support the little guys, you know, like subscribing to this channel.